Captain and Pangella too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to ya! Creature features! And all creatures! And all creatures! And the creature oh, gonna oh. get you tonight! You better not turn out your bedroom light! You grab your head and give us such a bite! Tonight, we have such an incredible movie that we won't bother you with a lengthy introduction about a guest that we shall tonight forego. But quickly, welcome to Creature Features. I am Vincent, that is Tangella, and the man with the dour face to this side would be the major domo of the estate, the esteemed Mr. Livingston. And have we a super incredible and blazingly brilliant program in store for you tonight. Because for the first time in Creature Features history, we shall present the epic film, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Filmed in 1954, this Disney classic stars Kirk Douglas, James Mason, and the amazing Peter Lorre. The film was edited by the talented Elmo Williams and... <clears throat> now what? Wrong movie. What do you mean, wrong movie? It says so right there on my cue card, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. The title is correct. However, the year, the production, and the actors are entirely different. A 1997 TV movie? I don't think I shall like this one. And it stars Richard Krenner, you say? Would this have been before or after he talked down John Rambo from the mountain? This happens to be a viable and noteworthy production of the film. And quite fortunately, it lacks the puerile humor of the Disney adaptation. Well then, so be it. Let's get it started then, shall we? And don't go away, because it shall be another night of undersea fright right here on Creature Features. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome to Creature Features. We're going to have a fantastic film tonight. You know, I was a bit, I was a bit pessimistic about this, but I did some reading since, since the, 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 the advertisement, and it's not a bad film. No. It was done by the people who make the Hallmark movies. Really? I know he watches the Hallmark movies. He, he likes the one about the busy New York executive woman who goes home and finds love. That's his favorite kind of film. He only wishes they weren't done in German or some other European language. In any case, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, if you're just watching the show for the first time ever, uh, you're in for a shock. Look at this face. But uh, you're going to have fun because it's a good movie. We've got Tangella with us tonight. And no guest because uh, why did we not get a guest tonight? Was there... We made a mistake in scheduling. Oh, you know, this happens sometimes because, you know, the days of the week all look the same. To me. They all have days in them. They do, and they all end in Y. So, I can see why people are confused, especially celebrities. You know, they, they don't know how to operate an itinerary. It's their personal assistants. That's what it is. No, they're handlers. Right? No, they're, that's different. Oh, all right. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get this film started. When we come back, uh, we'll probably get Andrew out a little bit later. We'll do some mail, and we're going to have fun. But 20,000 Leagues in the Sea, it's got to be a good film with a name like that, right? Yes. Right. Off we go. See you soon.
Sheridan. Is it a whale, Father? It must be so. It's nearly as long as our ship. Pretty amazing. Father, I'm frightened. What's that? Nothing to be frightened of, Percy. It's just a friendly old whale. There, you see? It's more frightened than you. Are you quite sure that the creatures present no danger, Captain? Quite the contrary, madame. Very curious creatures, these whales. Very intelligent in their own way. They'll follow a passenger liner like the Scotia for hundreds of leagues out of curiosity, but run like the devil himself from a whaler. I've never seen a whale before. Was it really so much bigger than the usual? I've seen bigger. I remember a blue whale swum down out of Arctic waters, the way they do sometimes when the whalers get sight of them. Now that one was 500 feet if it was an inch. Get that way, some of them, if they can outrun the whalers long enough. to be alarmed. The Scotia is the most modern ship in the White Star Fleet. There is nothing in the ocean that we need fear. A surprise! What are you doing here? I had to get away from Baltimore for a couple of days. Sophie, what is it? Something wrong? Fred Essenhoff asked me to marry him. Why? What did you tell him? No. I thought you were well disposed toward him. Do you know what he said to me, Father? What? that Johns Hopkins would never grant a woman tenure in the zoology department. But the only way to do the kind of research that I want to do is to marry him and assist with his. Sophie, I know very well I've had little influence over you since your mother died. You influence me in everything. Well, let me influence you in this. Marry him. Are you Professor Aranax, curator of marine biology at the New York Museum of Natural History? I am. And who are you, sir, if I may ask? Rear Admiral John E. Sellings. Clear the room, sir. I have a matter of utmost urgency to discuss with you. The Scotia was caught from behind while doing 18 knots under full steam. It was not a collision. It was an incision, a very precise one. Passengers hardly knew anything had occurred till the crew came above deck, sounding the alarm. Astonishing. How can we be of help in this matter, Admiral? My expertise is in zoology and my father's is in marine biology. Surely this was done by some kind of warship. No, young lady. In our judgment, a seagoing, fully submersible warship capable of doing this is a physical impossibility. That is why we have come to you, Professor Aranax. We understand you have a theory that could account for this. The common narwhal, or sea unicorn, can attain the length of 60 feet. 
It is called the sea unicorn because of its sharp ivory lance that protrudes from the lower mandible. It is essentially a tooth with a hardness of steel. Are you saying a hole in the Scotia's hole was caused by a narwhal? In prehistoric epochs, the land produced life forms of enormous size that gradually grew smaller and more efficient to meet the challenge of their changing environment. But the sea, the sea never changes, especially at its greatest depths where life began. I believe that those depths harbor creatures of an enormous size that have not evolved or changed. I refer to such undiscovered life forms in my theory as proto-leviathans. Is such a thing really possible? My father has devoted his career to proving that such proto-leviathans exist. This thing has attacked three American steamships of the White Star Line in the North Atlantic sea lanes. The USS Abraham Lincoln sails at first light under Captain Michael Farragut's command. Its mission is to search this thing out and destroy it. Will you help us find it? I have to come. It's much too dangerous. And it isn't dangerous for you? Sophie, for the last time. It's impossible. The Navy will not allow a woman aboard a warship about to undertake a hazardous mission. The Admiral was absolutely clear. But he didn't say anything about bringing your assistant. Captain on deck. Welcome aboard the USS Abraham Lincoln, Professor Aranax. I am Captain Michael Farragut. Good morning, sir. It's a pleasure to be aboard. Uh, this is my assistant, Mr. Charlie Darwin. Darwin? We were just having a look at the vantage from the bow. We intend to follow the concentration of plankton on the hypothesis that a creature such as we seek would feed in the most efficient manner, which is, of course, the large-scale consumption of plankton. You have to stand in the bow to do this? We'll be taking measurements by means of interferometer readings. Therefore, we have to see the plankton before the ship disturbs it. And this will lead me to the monster? If our hypothesis is correct, I believe it could. Please. Charlie? We have a whaler aboard who expects to be stationed in the bow if we need to call on him. Uh, he's a prickly sort by all accounts, but he also happens to be the finest harpoonist in the American whaling fleet. I've asked him to step in for a moment to make sure he understands about you being in the bow. He's liable to throw you overboard otherwise if you get in his way. Of course. I'll try to explain it to him. You won't let him bully you, will you, Mr. Darwin? <clears throat> Rather shy, I'm afraid. Don't tell me you found the damn thing already, Captain. We're barely out of New York Harbor. Evening, Ned Land. Miss Land. Professor Aranax and his assistant, Mr. Darwin, will be advising me on the search for our target. They will be setting up their instruments in the bow. <laughs> instruments? I, I, I wasn't aware that we were going to serenade this beast, Captain. <clears throat> if you'll excuse me, sir, I'd like to retire. Of course, Mr. Darwin. I will begin my observations at first light. Mr. Land, mm -hmm. you will accommodate Professor Aranax and his assistant. That is an order. Well, you are the captain. It is your ship. I just ask that you clear them out of my way when I go to work, that's all. Professor, you'll join me for a brandy and a cigar, won't you? It would be my pleasure, sir. Wouldn't mind one myself. That will be all, Mr. Land. Right. Good night. I'll get it. Any sign of our monster? <clears throat> nope. Well, that's good. Are you afraid to find it? Well, I would be afraid if I took it seriously. You don't believe there is such a creature? 
I don't know. You know, I think it sort of goes like this. Someone sees a whale, the ship hits a rock, people get frightened. Before you know it, the entire United States Navy is off on a wild sea monster chase. And I'm not complaining, don't get me wrong. You know, the first giant squid or some such we see, well, I'll harpoon it, I'll collect my bonus, and that'll be that. I don't think money is that important to you, Mr. Lamb. You're not that type of man. No, I'm not, huh? No. I think you're on board because you couldn't bear it if anyone else would have slain the dragon. That's your type, I think. <laughs> what would you know about types of men? If you'll excuse me, I have to get to bed. Good night. Ahoy! It's the thing itself! Where? There, on the horizon. Off the port bow. 30 degrees off the port bow. That's the color the witnesses all describe. An evil shade of green. Sound battle station! Battle Mr. Land, prepare yourself. Yeah. If all else fails, I'm relying on you. Just get me within four harpoon lengths. That's all I ask. All hands to battle stations and to double! Is it? I don't even dare to guess. There it is again! Port bow! 13 cables! 13 cables! Port bow! Take your aim. Take cover, Professor! Ready she goes! Ready as she goes! Ready Gun crews at the ready! How many of those bloody things do you have now? They fill a room. 
They fill an entire room. Well, you know, she does like octopi. And it does look somewhat like her hair. I mean, I could, I could do an a Tangela impersonation just by putting one of these up on my head. You should try it. Well, no, thank you. No, thank you. She loves these bloody things. Anyway, so welcome back to the show. We are watching 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and I think that's why she's got that. She's expecting an octopi scene. But uh, this film, uh, as you've noticed, is uh, not the original Disney film, but I like this one better. I'm, pleasant, I'm pleasantly surprised. Mm. No, it's, it's, it's well made. It's got competent thespians and... It's not bad. No, it's nicely done, nicely done. However, the, the name does confuse me. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Now, I look this up, and to get to the core of the Earth is only 500 leagues. So how in blazes does one go 20,000 leagues under the sea? They travel under the sea straight ahead. So they're going around the world under the sea. For 20, so why did they leagues. call it Twenty Thousand Leagues Around the World Under the Sea? Title is too long. It's already too bloody long. All right, that's confusing. So, anyways, that's it. Yeah, Mr. Livingston says it's because they're traveling. It's distance under the not sea, depth. not depth. But you know, it's implied that it's depth, right? In the title, so, by the some people might interpret it that way. No, I think all people interpret it that way. No, except for Mr. Livingston, because he knows things. He, he knows things he shouldn't know. Indeed. He, he knows things that would give us all nightmares. And put people in jail. Oh, we won't talk about that. In any case, uh, let's get back to the film. When we come back, we're going to do some mail that you sent us, because we've got a big stack of mail, right? We have. We do. All right, we're going to do some mail, but first let's get back to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, 1997 version. See you soon. You know something? I knew you were a boy. <coughs> oh, Sophie. So I'm so tired. Would that make a professor? says Abraham Lincoln is limping back to New York with a hole in her gut. She is too gravely injured to linger here looking for you. Now you three, whoever you are, understand something and understand it well. You are lost at sea and dead to the world. If you choose to enter the Nautilus, you choose to enter a different world. A new world. And you can give up all hope of returning to yours. If you do not agree to these terms, the Nautilus shall return to its world and leave you to return to yours. If you're saying we're prisoners of war, we have the right to try to escape if we can. You decline my terms very well. Does he speak for all of you? Mr. Land, allow me to deal with this. Sir, we agree to your terms. I speak for myself and I say the hell with you. You want my liberty? Well, you better kill me, because that's the only way you're going to get it. Be quiet, Mr. Land. My name is Sophie. 
And this is my father, Professor Henry Aranex. The famous marine biologist. I am. I'm very familiar with your work, Professor. Then you... you will help us. And who are you? Also a scientist? Ned Lamb, harpoonist. But I tell you, I don't think Sophie and her father would take too kindly you dumping me over the side. I'll come quietly. By the way, that's a fancy uniform you got there. Somehow he's harnessed this mysterious force to provide every form of energy required by this vessel. And here we are under the sea. How can it be? Do you think Mr. Land is all right? Oh, I'm sure Mr. Land's able to take care of himself. He saved your life, Father. Aren't you concerned? No, the captain of this miraculous vessel is in fact the man who saved our lives. The man is civilized, Sophie. He's proven it. He has proven no such thing. I see you are both comfortable. And hungry too, no doubt. My name is Nemo. Captain Nemo. That means no one in Latin. Quite so. I'm honored to have you aboard. Both of you. Thank you. The sea has yielded up its greatest treasures to me, but none so precious as your company, Miss Aranex. Please, Professor. I hope you'll be happy here. You are free, of course, to pursue your scientific inquiries. I think you may find the Nautilus interesting enough for the purpose. Will Mr. Land be joining us for dinner? No. Mr. Land insists on remaining in his cabin. May I see him? In due course. Please, you must be famished. Enjoy your meal. This looks delicious. Stewed pork, if I'm not mistaken. It may look and taste like stewed pork, but in fact, it is dolphin liver cunningly prepared. And those cutlets are fillet of sea turtle. This is sea cucumber salad, and the excellent jam, Miss Aranax, is made from sea anemone. All of this food is from the sea? We who sail the Nautilus are sustained by the oceans of the world. In everything. These clothes we're wearing, the material is unfamiliar to me. Is it from the sea, too? Trust a woman to notice. The cloth is woven from the silken filaments of the byssus fan muscle, strong enough to resist a hurricane. Why do you choose to live this way? And who are these people who have followed you into this exile? Sophie, this isn't exile. This is liberation. Mobilis in mobile, Miss Aranax. Free in a free world. Exactly. I must ask you a question, Captain Nemo, or risk perhaps misunderstanding you. You have used this extraordinary creation of yours to attack unarmed shipping in the North Atlantic. <clears throat> that is something we should speak about when perspectives have shifted enough to allow proper understanding. Excuse me. May I please see Mr. Land?
Which way to Mr. Land's cabin? It's like bathing in liquid light, isn't it? May I offer you some hot coffee? Thank you. I can understand how your museum has come to contain such natural treasures. But how did you come by these pictures? Some of them I have seen in museums. That would be before they sank in transit. You collected all these from sunken ships. And countless others in my storehouses beneath the seven seas. Gold, jewels, the finest clothes. All at your disposal. And did you sink those ships? My mission is not a criminal one, Miss Aranax. So you didn't sink them. The Nautilus is not a pirate ship. I'm sorry if I offend you, but it seems to me a fair question, given your propensity to ram innocent ships. I have never sunk a ship, innocent or otherwise, and I'm not in the least offended. Indeed, I find your fearless passion to know the truth intoxicating. I always dreamed of finding a woman with a first-rate mind. Someone who was capable of understanding me. And even in this, the sea has not failed to provide. Do you mind if I examine some of your exhibits? You needn't ask. Some of them are absolutely extraordinary.
Hello YouTube viewers, have you subscribed yet? I see a few of you have forgotten to do so. I am somewhat disappointed. Please subscribe. Thank you. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you are watching Creature Features, and we are watching 20,000 Leagues Around the Sea. Not around the sea. Mm. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, time to do mail, because you sent us mail, or somebody out there sent us mail, and we have to read it, right? Yes. That is The Rules. William Craner from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, it would appear. William Kramer, I think. Did you say Craner? Craner. I think it's Kramer. We'll find out. It's a handwritten note, which Mr. Livingston was kind enough to type up for me because he knows I have trouble reading sometimes and I read very slow. All right, uh, hello, Robin and I watch your show every night. Every bloody night. These people do it every night. Every single bloody night. They're fans. That's right. Tangela is really cool and neat. Yes, she is very cool. She is definitely not neat. Ask Mr. Livingston. Oh. Uh, Livingston 2, you're great. We look forward to watching your show in the future. We like Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, and Bela Lugosi. Uh, William Craner. Uh, Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, we, we can't do much for you on those films, but Bela Lugosi, he's on our show quite a bit, is he not? And yes, indeed. You'd almost think he's a friend of the program, a friend of the production. How often he graces our screen, right? True. Right, right. Thanks True. for writing. He's a classic. He is a classic. This one from Joseph Dalton in... Did you say dolphin? Dalton. Dalton. Like the Dalton boys. No, I know. That's of a quite, Western fame. That's a nice British name. Dolphin is not. Dolphin. Oh, it's a card with a duck. She likes ducks. All right, Joseph Dalton. Let's see what Joseph has to say. We've got two notes. How does this go? Is this like two letters from two different people? Or which one do I read first? The card. All right. Uh, sending you warm and fuzzy wishes for a happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, you know, for, for a girl that can be so cruel sometimes, she does like Valentine's Day. Uh, dear Tangela, I hope this card finds a place in your heart. You are very pretty, and I like watching you on Creature Features. Very nice. And then uh, here's another note to the rest of us. says, Dear Cast at Creature Features. Cast. Would you please give this Valentine's Day card to Tangela? You told me to read the other one first. I should have read this one first. I wanted to trick you. I can't find the show Creature Features on television stations around here. Where is he? Malmet? Illinois. I suppose we don't have a station on there. I sure wish that I could. Well, please take care to all the staff, and would you ask Tangela to please send her picture? Thanks, Joseph Dalton. Okay. She'll, she will probably send you a picture of one of her ducks, since you sent her a picture of one of yours. She said, how many ducks do you have now? You have many. More than she knows when she makes that face. Next up, Mr. Livingston. And a dreaded package. A dreaded package? Why is it dreaded? Because there's so many. We have, we have to create another room for the packages. Oh, all right. Well, maybe some of these things we could donate to charity or something like that. All right, you need to get rid of the octopi and take care of this. And this is a fabulous card, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. This is incredible and it's falling with money there's money 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 okay where do we start first off we have a beautiful card and i will show that it's like a haunted house 3d card look at this you see no you gotta look look it's well done all right and uh greetings residents residents of the polta mansion it is i granddaughter edie my grandpa monty wrote last summer and figured it was my turn to write in and say hello. Our family habitually watches your show every Friday and Saturday night. Now, this is some very nice language for a young girl. Indeed. I wonder if she had some help with this, this letter. 
Uh, Mr. Livingston, the show's all not the same without you. Can you please tell us one thing you do for fun when you're off on Friday nights? I go to the pub and play darts. He does. He's quite good at darts, too. Although I think she's better. But she, she, she throws more darts at people than he does. He uses targets. She uses a blowgun. And she practices mm -hmm. on moving objects. Last Halloween, my mama and I had fun dressing up as Miss Tangella. We cannot get enough of her mischievous antics. She is delightfully devilish harpo marks of our generation. We blow a kiss to her for the laughter and the pain she bestows upon us all. Vincent, you are a most charismatic host. See, I told you. Oh. No, I told him I'm the most charismatic host, and he, he, he always makes that face. Uh, your writing and comedic delivery with your flatmates and guests is a gas. In short, please keep the shows rolling, and we shall continue to stay tuned. Uh, P.S. Hello to Tom, the man behind the curtain. Thank you for your dedication and for commuting from Petaluma to the mansion each week. You did a magnificent job on Up Late with Bob Wilkins' documentary. Much love, granddaughter Edie and the Monty family. All right, so we got a couple of things in here. We've got two 20 American dollar bills, which is very kind. And they will not go to Tangela because she will spend them on explosives. But this is the best part right here. We've got, and we'll put up some big ones. Photos. We've got Mama dresses Tangela. Mm. Look at this. Look at this. But this is my favorite right here. This is Edie dressed as Tangella. Look at that. And you know what? She looks more like Tangella than you do. No, she looks great. And she, she has the underlook that you do. That's wonderful. And a nicer skull. Thank you so much for writing. Thank you for the gifts. And uh, oh, we, we have those gifts I haven't even looked at. Mm -hmm. What do we got here? For Vincent, what is this? This is all from the same people. Yes. You spoil yes. us, dear friends. All right, this is uh, Vincent's Quavage Extra Side Table Hair Spray. My brand with my face. I'll put that there. And a skunk. Oh, what's this? An octopi, that's an octopi necklace. That's for you, right? Mm -hmm. And the skunk is for you? And I got some ties, a bolo tie and a bow tie. A bolo tie and a bow tie. My goodness, how sweet. A bolo tie with a scorpion in it. You are too <clears throat> kind. All right. Thank you. That's it for mail, right? That's it. All right. If you'd like to send us an email, use the address you see appearing over here. Or if you'd like to send a wonderful box of gifts and pictures, send it to the postal address you see right here. We're going to get back to 20,000 leagues under the sea. And we'll be back after the break with Andrew. See you soon. Professor Aranax, how kind of you to join me. Must be dreaming. I assure you, everything is quite real. As a matter of fact, I was just reading your masterful work again. I consulted constantly. I am honored, sir. Your library is extraordinary. How many volumes do you have here, Captain Nemo? Thousands, all told. But the books you see here are merely those I like to have near at hand, such as yours. They're my only remaining link with the world above. I bought my last book the day the Nautilus set sail. Since that day, I assume mankind neither thinks nor writes anything of consequence. I am simply overwhelmed. This room, this ship, how deep can it go, if I may ask you, sir? I've yet to test its limit. But you are wondering, perhaps, whether there will be an opportunity to test your famous deep water theory of static evolution? Precisely, sir. You may depend upon it, Professor. I have some rather interesting scientific volumes in my personal quarters. Perhaps you'd like to see them? Oh, yes. Please.
Mr. Land. Ned, are you here? Sophie. You all right? Yes, we both are. Are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. You shouldn't be here. I don't understand. He said you were resting. <laughs> well, I'm not exactly resting, Sophie. I mean, this is a brig. See, unlike you and your fathers. Don't let him see you here. I'm not leaving you here. Go. Before they find you. Go. Sophie, we cannot be making demands. We must appeal to Nemo's better nature. We mustn't make him regret having taken us aboard. I will not stand for this treatment of Ned. Sophie, Sophie, lower your voice. I am not afraid of him. I am not one of these, these ensigns of his. You will listen to me. He is a genius, and I believe he's a decent man. I'm sure there's an explanation. We must give him the opportunity to provide that. The secret is sodium. Sodium? Not zinc. Sodium mercury Ruhmkorff batteries, to be precise. As the mercury in the amalgam is never used up, only the sodium requires replenishment. And since there is an endless supply of sodium in seawater... You have an endless supply of energy for the Nautilus. Precisely. Amazing. But I don't understand how you were able to build all this without anyone finding you out. That wasn't as difficult as you may imagine. Only carefully considered. Miss Aranax, you look beautiful. I must insist I see Mr. Land. Your concern for him is quite admirable, however. Captain, Mr. Land. Oh, good to see you, Mr. Land. Are you well? I'm fine. Fine, now that I'm out of the brig. Mr. Land had insisted upon being treated as a prisoner of war, obliging me to comply. But this troubled my principles greatly. So I've decided to extend him the freedom of the Nautilus in the hope that he will not abuse my trust. Well, that's wonderful. Mobilis in mobile. Mobilis in mobile. Whatever. You know, he's interested in you. I'm aware of it. Oh, you are? Why are you so concerned, Ned? What, do you have to ask? Yes. You want an answer? <sighs> Is it true what they say about sailing men? What? Do you have a girl in every port? Not quite every port. Good night, Ned.
What is the nature of your interest in Miss Aranex, Mr. Land? What's that to you? Have you stolen her honor? <laughs> you know, if I wanted, you'd be dead before they could save you. Then so would you be, and Professor Aranax, and indeed Sophie. You're not quite that stupid, are you? Now answer my question. Is she an honorable woman? This afternoon, we shall be visiting Crespo Island. I have a hunting reserve there. I thought perhaps you'd like to go with me. Will we go on land? <laughs> Hardly. Crespo Island is an insignificant little rock as far as the air world is concerned. But underneath it is the most beautiful coral forest in all the oceans of the world. Will we walk on the ocean floor? Would you like to? It sounds fascinating. You're fearless, aren't you? I'm sure I'm not. But I am curious. You are fearless. I at least know that much about you. I know nothing about you, Captain Nemo. My daughter would have been your age by now. In my family, we married young. My wife and my children are gone. Since entering the Nautilus, I've lived with my loneliness. I'd abandoned all hope it would ever be otherwise. There are many beautiful women of Munster Ensigns. I suspect they are yours to command. I cannot find what I seek among them. What do you seek, Captain Nemo? A queen. So, you will join us on our expedition, Professor? I would dare to insist on it. And you, Mr. Land? You sure you want to do this? Absolutely. All right, I'll join you. Good. There's no need to be frightened, Sophie. You'll find you'll be able to breathe perfectly well. I'm sure I'll find it breathtaking.
Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to Creature Features. It's it's Bubble Sea World here. Did you put him up to this? Yeah. She threatened him. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm wondering, does he get more abuse because he does cooperate or because he does not cooperate and he's trying to avoid the abuse? No, he's he's like a little he's a, like a little elf right now. It's interesting. Not so little. Not so little. Anyways, uh, if you're just joining us, we are watching 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. You know, I like this, this production of this film. It's a good one. And, you know, Tom was telling me they spent $15 million to make this movie. Well, no wonder it's good. Well, we never show $15 million movies on this program. I don't recall any. No, we're, we're lucky if we show a $15 program on this movie. On well, the movie, a little on more this program. than that. Well, not much more. Now, we tend to have low-budget fare, do we not? Uh, you're not paying any attention to me. You're, it's just bubbles. Yes, but they get on my suit. All right, well, don't stress over. We'll have a dry clean for you. My Thank goodness. you. My goodness. My any case, uh, how are you doing, Tangela? Hey, you keep bringing out these. Let me see this one. This one's got amazing eyeballs. This was sent in by a viewer, right? Very authentic looking. Now you bought this one? Look at those eyes. Those are wonderful. They're like creepy. Isn't there a scene in this film where the uh, Nautilus... I believe so. Tom, does the Nautilus get attacked by an octopi in this version of the yeah, film? I don't know. You don't know? A Kraken? Right? A Kraken. Unleash the Kraken. There's no unleashing of the Krakens in this film. All right, and uh, how are you doing, Andrew? Are you all right? I think he's having too much fun with this bubble machine. Yeah, I'm surprised you let him take that bubble. She's always spraying him in the face with that bubble machine. Maybe he plans to get revenge upon her or something. I don't know. In any case, uh, we're getting silly here. I think you'd rather see the movie than this monstrosity. So uh, let's get back to the film. And uh, when we come back, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll f you're going to tell us something interesting, right? I don't have anything interesting to say. That's true. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye.
outside the museum window. You must only have minutes left. Rescue squad, Mr. Land is on the forward hull. Take him here. My best divers are on their way. Sophie, because I'll tell you when those sharks came after me. I thought I'd pretty much drawn my last breath. They were wanted me for supper. Didn't seem to want anyone else. I took one step, and all of a sudden I'm tumbling, falling into the darkness of hell. It was like being buried alive. And I started climbing. It was all I could do. I just climbed and I climbed. And, then, and finally I saw the ship. That was the last I remember. These ensigns saved your life. How did they now? Well, I'm a lucky man, aren't I? Luck had nothing to do with it. You saved yourself, Mr. Land. It took a great deal of courage. Well, I'd have been a dead man if Sophie hadn't been in that room. That was luck. If Captain Nemo hadn't acted so decisively, it would have all been for nothing. Yes, Captain. I owe everything to your decisiveness. Well, some good has come of your terrible ordeal. At least we've come to a better understanding amongst us. Yeah. Yeah. It's entirely within their known range of behavior. Look, you may know dead fish, but I know live ones. Those sharks had it in for me and me alone. I don't understand. What are you saying? Well, let me put it to you this way. I don't think that was joy in Nemo's face when I showed up again. If he was responsible for what happened, why didn't he tell his divers to take a minute longer getting to you? Because he couldn't have you thinking he was behind it all, now could he? Can't you let yourself accept it, Ned? He is not the monster you make him out to be. Don't trust him, Sophie. I have sailed with captains like him before, and I know the signs. That's exactly how he thinks. He is mad. Don't let him blind you. You have to see him for what he is. Seaweed, you say? Remarkable. It's a little harsh, despite all our ingenuity, but still. A very satisfactory smoke, I think. <laughs> Your move, Professor. This is my move. Captain Nemo, I am consumed by my curiosity about you. A man shares confidences with a friend, Professor. And he doesn't need but one, if he chooses wisely. Well, are you not surrounded by friends? I am surrounded, as you put it, by followers. There is a difference. I would consider it an honor to be your friend. If I take you into my confidence, you are bound to me forever. Do you really wish to carry such a burden? Oh, it is no burden to be a true friend. It also means one has a true friend. I offer you my hand, sir. Very well. I was raised to be a king. 
and educated to lead my people into the modern scientific world. But the armies of the West came to my small country and arranged otherwise. I escaped and survived. The king and queen, my parents, did not. Nor did my wife. Nor did my children. I am at war, Professor. And once I have the shipping between Europe and America in my stranglehold, I shall demand my country back as the price of releasing my grip. What is it, Ned? I, uh, I wanted to say I was sorry for earlier. That's all right, Ned. Is there something else? Yeah. You know, when I was out there, I... I pretty much made my peace. I only had one regret. Just one. What is it you want of me, Ned? Another conquest to brag about in the taverns? <laughs> you know, I, I think there's something you should know about me. What? I'm a married man. What? Yeah. That was a long time ago. Matter of fact, I'd, I just got my journeyman's ticket. I met her in a bar in Singapore. Her name was Kate. She was fiery. I mean, it was love at first sight. And I was prepared to give up the sea. But after a while, I got, <clears throat> I got restless. So I signed on for one last hitch on a whaler that was working the Antarctic. And in the middle of the Sea of Japan, I suddenly thought, I made a terrible mistake. So I jumped ship. And uh, on my way home, I bought a set of pearls, a set of matched pearls from this diver, and I had them laid in gold. And I had them in my hands, and I was ready to give them to her, put them around her neck and beg her for forgiveness. I walked through the door, I found her with another sailor. What did you do? I went back to the sea. What did you do with the pearls? Oh, the pearls. <laughs> well, the pearls, I drank the pearls up a long time ago. What's this? Planning an escape? No, no, not at all, Professor. I'm just uh, on my way to my cell. I, I think I'll just sit there and wait till I turn into one of Nemo's ensigns. Everything will be all right. Good night. Let him be, Sophie. He is restless because he has no role aboard the Nautilus. He is not a scientist. But you must remember that you are. We cannot turn our backs on such a scientific opportunity. What good are all our discoveries if we will never leave the Nautilus? No. We will leave the Nautilus. Has he told you so? Mm, not in so many words, but I'm absolutely certain he will let us go. And you didn't tell me? Well, what I know, I know in confidence. I'm his friend, and proud to call myself so. I want to prove that his trust in me is not misplaced. It's our one realistic hope of one day returning to the world. Sophie. To ally yourself with Mr. Ned Land is to guarantee that we will never leave.
Hi, this is Brian from Columbus, Ohio, big fan of Creature Features. Would love to see Island of Terror with Peter Cushing from 1966. A uh, little great horror flick from back in the day. Uh, keep up the good work and uh, hope to see the movie soon. Bye. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Creature Features. It is 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea night. A fun time. No guests tonight because uh, we had some kind of scheduling issue. There. We did. Well, we did. they did, actually. Yeah, yeah. So we won't, uh, we won't bother you too much. And uh, Andrew's getting a little crazy with the bubbles, so uh, we'll make this quick and get back to the film. But Livingston, did you know that they ended up writing a book for this movie? In 1870. Well... Probably, but no, they made the movie and it was so good. A bloke named Jules Verne wrote a book. He did indeed. Right, yeah. He's, I'm trying to do a show here and you're irritating my, my co-host, Andrew. Andrew. My, my goodness, he's... Go in the corner. I, I think he had too much coffee today. No, no, so, you know, I think I should read this book. Right. You should, it's a very good book, actually. Have you read it? It's on my library. It, was it ever on the New York Times bestseller list? I believe it was. Oh, all right. The New York Times is older than you think. Oh, it is? Indeed. You know, it's the paper of record. That's what they say. Right, right, the paper of record. All right, well, let's get back to this film, and then uh, when we come back, uh, we'll have some more interesting trivia about this movie. So uh, don't you go away, and the film gets better and better and better, right? It does. It does. Off we go. See you soon. East, northeast, 21 degrees. Our oxygen is replenished now. Time to go below, Sophie. Professor Aranax. Oh, must we go in so soon? It's such a beautiful day. Yes, yeah, beautiful. It's just as beautiful beneath the waves. Well, if we must. One could easily form the impression that you hate the world above these waves, Captain Nemo. I don't hate it. I hate nothing. I simply reject it. And yet you have to come up every day to take your bearings in it. Exactly where are we now, Captain Nemo? Half a day's journey, and 900 meters above the city of Atlantis. No. Hmm. Well then, shall we go below? Hmm. Atlantis. Yes. Atlantis, still raging, still breathing fire, still refusing to die 9,000 years after surrendering to the ocean. How hot are these waters over Atlantis, Captain Nemo? Too hot for divers. 211 degrees Fahrenheit, close to the boiling point. Even the mighty Nautilus cannot linger here. sufficiently. We must walk the streets of Atlantis one day. Imagine, Sophie, all of Atlantis at our feet. We could author a full volume on that subject alone.
If you wish, Professor, you may comfortably retire now. The ship will be cool with all this fresh sea air we're taking on. Uh, I have much to enter in my journal before I can allow myself that pleasure. Good night, Sophie. Good night to you. Good night. Sophie, I must be candid. I asked your father if he would allow me a moment's private conversation with you this evening, and um, he very graciously agreed. I should think I would be the one to ask about having private conversations with me. I thought that the conversation I had in mind merited some formality. Formality? I wish to ask you for your hand in matrimony, Sophie. You are proposing marriage? I am prepared to make you queen of the Nautilus. You are the only woman I've ever known with whom I could share my life completely. You were sent to me. Don't you see that? It's ordained. I couldn't possibly accept your proposal, Captain Nemo. I offer you the choice between spending your life aboard the Nautilus as my subject or my queen. And you reject me. You must hold me in very low esteem, my dear Sophie. I am troubled by your selfishness. My selfishness? The treasures you pile up? The works of art, the knowledge, the power to change so much of the world for the better. How can you bear to keep all that to yourself when you could be doing so much to ease the suffering of humanity? It's monstrous. Oh, I see. You think me a monster. Well, no wonder you reject me. Sophie, would you do me the courtesy of accompanying me below? The full compendium of all I have learned and observed thus far. An ongoing work. Suffering humanity will benefit from it very soon. dollars in gold. Tomorrow morning, I shall drop this off at a designated point above the ocean to be picked up by those who fight on land for what we fight for under the sea. You give it to them? Do you really suppose I toiled to collect these treasures for selfish reasons? I had no idea. I knew you were meant for me the moment I saw you in the water. I didn't think life had anything more to offer. Good night, Captain Nemo. Good night, Sophie. So, am I still a monster? <laughs> well, I don't really think so. Sophie, go below. What is it? 
I said go below. you do such a stupid thing, Ned? Well, you made your choice, I made mine. A fool's choice. Father said he's going to let us go. <laughs> you believe that? I believe in the end he will do the decent thing. So you don't think he tried to kill me? No, I don't. Well, well. I'm sure you've got some important scientific work to do. Captain Nemo thinks you need to be confined. <laughs> I'm inclined to agree with him. Well, it's nice to know you're thinking about me. I am your friend, Ned. If you'd allow me to be. Hello, this is Mr. Livingston. It would appear I have been tasked with requesting you to help our show financially by visiting our patron page. Your generosity will help us keep Creature Features on the air. With only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new entertainment for your viewing pleasure each and every week. And if you have the desire to give more, you might even receive a gift from Tangela. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. Locked Ned up. <sighs> like a common criminal. He behaves like one. It was entirely predictable. He's just a fool. Sophie, we have to let Captain Nemo know that we at least are capable of understanding the objective situation. What is the objective situation, Father? That we have to make the best of things. You want me to marry him? I would not stand in your way. I see. Sophie. Sophie. I'm trying to do what's best for you. What's best for me, Father? 
or what's best for you. Maybe you're the one that's being seduced. Troubled, Professor. But there's nothing to fear, I assure you. I wish to speak to you about Sophie. Do you bring me good news? I have come to do my duty as her father. I have come to ask you to withdraw your suit. Now look out warning, sir. Lincoln closing. Stand by to engage the Lincoln, gentlemen. Aye, aye, sir. March it. Well. What is it, Father? What's happening? I don't know. I think it's the Abraham Lincoln. Sophie. Sophie, no. Sophie! I demand to know what's going on. Captain Farragut, I made a poor impression at our last encounter. I intend to rectify that this time. What is it that you want, Captain Nemo? Justice. Send your mightiest, but I will have what is mine. All hands to the bow! All hands to the bow! Come on, Farragut. Fire at will! Here I am. Come on, Farragut. Remember, he only wounds them and sends them home with their tails between their legs. Not this time. Murder! 
adventurer. No, Sophie. Warrior. Why, Nemo? Why? Why do you think I didn't sink the Abraham Lincoln during our first encounter? When she limped back to port, my enemies finally gave me their full attention, as I intended. But they still thought they could defeat me, so they sent her back to destroy me. Well, now they will understand. They can send all the navies of the world. I will not be defeated. How many men died on that ship? I'm not entirely sure, but a frigate of the Abraham Lincoln class would carry a minimum complement of 650 men. And you feel nothing? Quite the contrary, Sophie. I feel a great joy. Sophie. Sophie! A moment, Professor. My friend. That ship fired upon me unprovoked, did it not? That was an act of war, was it not? You knew I was at war. I told you the night you pledged me your loyalty. Do you remember? My friend. And where are you taking us now? I have some business in the North Atlantic. But our course takes us near the Caribbean Trench with depths of up to 5,000 fathoms. There, as I promised, you will have an opportunity to prove your theory of static evolution. Consider it the reward of friendship. To science. I cannot raise my glass with you, Captain Nemo. Not to science, nor to anything else. I wish to see Mr. Land. Oh, my God. What have they done to you? The alarm sounded. They came straight in and chained me. Did he sink her? the devil himself. I didn't let myself see what was so plain to you. I'm sorry. Is it plain to you now? And to your father? Yes. We have to escape. We have to warn the world. But don't waste any more precious time with me. You stay by Nemo's side, both of you. Keep your eyes and your ears open. You look for a chance, any chance. I don't want to go anywhere near that man. Then we will remain prisoners. All of us. I'll do whatever I have to. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Uh, stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories.
Welcome back to Creature Features. We are watching 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and we've got Andrew and his irritating bubble machine with us. Um, you know, uh, I find his headgear more irritating than that. You know, it's a, it's a nice chapeau, but there's something that uh, Tangella typically wears, is it not? Indeed. Right. Yeah. You know, why don't we save the bubbles for another time? I think we've had enough of the bubbles. He's like a child. Is, is, is he on something? Second I mean, childhood. I, I've never seen him so, so playful. All right, so let's, let's just ease up on the bubbles, right? Yes. Mm. He's pestuous, just like her. Oh, my goodness. All right, uh, anyways, uh, so some, some more fun facts about this film. Did you know that this film was made at Pinewood Studios? Very popular place. In the UK. Very now, famous. I've been to Pinewood Studios. It's Have massive. You? Now, it makes Hollywood look like an amateur facility. Is that the one yeah. that's right next to Pine Plastic Studios? No, it's Pinewood. He was trying to make a joke. I know he was. And he's still blowing. You know, if you keep doing that, I'm going to have Tangela come deactivate this, this device of yours. He's... Now, you know, he normally plays with tools, wrenches and things like that, right? Which he should be doing right now. Right, no, it's like, he, he just won't stop now, will he? Tangela, can you take care of this issue, please? If you would. Problem solved. All right, what do you say we get back to this film? Yes. All right. Well, that settles that. Let's uh, let's get back to twenty thousand leagues into the sea, and we'll see you soon. Why haven't you released him from those chains? It's inhuman. I'm willing to release Mr. Land altogether. You are? The well, secrecy is no longer necessary. After I cut off the old world from the new, I will put Mr. Land ashore with my terms of surrender. And what about my father and me? Your father, too. He will represent my interests and speak for my good character. What are your plans for me? Don't be frightened, Sophie. A glorious destiny awaits you. Power to the hull. Whatever it is, it'll let go as soon as it gets a taste of this.
It will soon tire of this game. With all due respect, Captain, I don't think so. What do you mean? This creature would be completely unevolved in any way. It would be days, even weeks, before it gives up trying to break open our shell. How much air is left? A day's worth? Half a day. At most, we were just about to surface. Are you certain this thing will not let us go? I am. Then we must kill it. I'll arm my best divers. Stay here. It will take more than your Nemo guns. You underestimate the concentrated firepower of my weapons, Professor. Nemo guns can do in combination. Sending Ned out there. Go to your quarters. I will not! I said go to your quarters. See, I thought you could do anything, Nemo. Why don't you kill it yourself? Are you frightened, Mr. Harpoonist? No, not particularly. But you are. Save the Nautilus. And you shall have your liberty. And Sophie. You know the funny thing about you? You really are a man of your word, aren't you? Can you tell me something, man to man? You did try to kill me, didn't you? The diving crew smeared rendered blubber on your suit. Containing the sexual hormones of mating blue shark. I'll meet you in the dive room.
You lied to me. No, I was lying to myself. Not to you. You're going, aren't you? There's nothing you can say, so you should save your breath. So you slew the dragon after all. Yeah, I guess I did. sailed to the nearest land. Put an end to this mad dream. The Nautilus isn't just a ship, Professor. It's a refuge. 
We've severed all ties with the land. I have your word that you'll set us free. You're free to go. All of you. Mobilis and Mobile. Set a course for the coral forest. We will carry on. When we get safely home, Will anyone believe our story? I can't say. Nor can I say what happened to the Nautilus. Is Captain Nemo still alive? I hope so. I hope he's made his peace beneath the ocean, his adopted country. If his destiny is strange, it is also sublime. As it is written in the book of Ecclesiastes, who can fathom the depths of the abyss. And so ends 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. You know, I like that ending. Did you? Did you like the whole film? Well, I did as well. No, it's, it's a good movie. I, you know, I think, I think it should have won an Academy Award. Well, I don't know if it was that good. Or an Emmy. Or, you know, it had a nice soundtrack. It could have won a Grammy as well. Maybe it won all three and we just don't know. No, I, I think it was a wonderful film. And uh, this one, did you check his pulse? He's breathing. All right. Well, he might not have a pulse. He could be breathing without a pulse, you know. It's possible. I find that difficult to understand. You know, he, I think he wanted to be like a professor or a doctor or something like this. Imagine, Dr. Livingston. You know, what kind of scientist would Dr. Livingston be? I, I bet he would be the one that studies bugs. Entomologist, what they call that? Entomologist? An entomologist. He would be an entomologist because he's studying at bugs. All the bugs. Anthropologists, probably. Anthropology, right. Study the strange human beings. Yeah. Anybody in particular? I won't say. Yeah, see, so listen to him. Anyways, uh, that is it for us tonight. Uh, what do we got going on next week? We've got uh, another movie. And uh, I think we have a guest. I think we have a guest. I think we have a guest. And so uh, we're going to have a guest. We're going to have a movie. Uh, hopefully he will wake up again because we need the guest chair. And uh, I think it'll be a good movie. 
because I, I saw the list of movies we have coming and every one of them I went ooh and aw. You do that every time. No, not like this, because I went ooh and aw. Ah. And she even said ooh and aw. You know her. She never says ooh and aw. No, she doesn't. No, so that's it. All right, well, I think that's it for us. Uh, thank you so much for watching our program tonight. We hope you enjoyed the film. We hope you enjoyed our antics. And we hope you will uh, subscribe to us on YouTube and join us next week for another movie and a guest and some fun. Don't forget we love you and we'll see you next time. So uh, Livingston, I'm thinking if I were to produce a replica of the Nautilus, I could, I could take a, a, a world tour underwater. I can't wait for the day. Mm.